and welcome to the Bethel Church Podcast, located in the heart of the Black Hills. Our focus is to live, grow, love, and serve for the sole purpose to make Jesus known. So exactly one minute has just passed. It's the most awkward time ever. Wouldn't you agree? One minute just passed. Now my watch tracks time, has a second time, second hand that moves every second, right? 60 seconds moves the big hand one step forward, marking the one minute time frame. It's amazing how long one minute of silence seems, right? When you're not doing anything. But when you're doing something, it seems like a minute goes by like that. So it's one of those things of timing, right? There are exactly 22 days until Christmas. Everybody knows that, right? Kids know it especially, all right? 22 days until Christmas. That means there are approximately 515 hours until we celebrate the birth of Christ, okay? That translates to approximately 30,900 minutes left to get everything done before Christmas is here. That sounds like a lot of time. There are presents to purchase. There are presents to wrap. There are parties to attend. There are people to visit. There are sugar cookies to make for Pastor Keith. And we only have 30,900 minutes left to do it. Why are we just sitting here? Shouldn't we be doing something? Because it seems like that is not a lot of time left when you think of it in days. 22 days left until Christmas. 30,000 minutes left. But if you think about it, The one minute we sat in silence here seems like eternity. Because you're like, I'm doing nothing. But when you start moving, it goes by really quick. So this series, Unwrapping the Miraculous, I've decided to go a little nostalgic about it and talk about Advent. Now, I'm not going to do a traditional Advent because I'm just not a traditional guy. And if I did that, everybody would be like, what are you doing? Because this is not you. By the way, thank you to the group who gave me the fly swatter. Where are you at? Let me hear you. Thank you for that. This thing is legit. Legit. The other day, I was trying to mess with somebody. I was trying to get them to touch it. And I was like, I thought I was going to be funny, and, you know, you push the button, it turns on. I didn't have the button pushed, but I had pushed it just seconds before. And I wasn't thinking about it. And I said, see, nothing happens. And I touched it, and I, the, my whole body just, just <laughs> tensed up. So those flies have no chance. I'm going to lay this right here, not in the water. Oh, my gosh, look at that. Oh, I just got one. That thing is drunk now. Look at that. But that thing's legit. <laughs> Don't touch one of those if you push that button. But I want to talk about this Advent thing. I want to look at Advent. I want to look at it a little bit. I want us to recognize not only the significance of one moment in time, but also the strategic nature of those moments. That strategic nature of time is often referred to as timing. Everybody talks about timing. We've all talked about if the the timing is right, yes. If the timing is wrong, then you face the consequences of it. Timing is important in everything we do. Talking to someone about something important. Asking a question at the right time. A funeral is not the right time to ask a weird question. All right? I've been there before, and it's so awkward, and it's so, you just don't do it. All right? My daughter doesn't understand timing. My little seven-year-old does not understand that. She likes to talk whenever her brain brings something to her thought And no matter what is going on, she blurts it out. It can also be dangerous to have bad timing, right? Very dangerous. Do you plant your garden in December? No, the timing wouldn't be right. There's a time, a right time for everything. I think we can all agree that late November through December is not the right timing to start a diet, right? You do not start a diet. October 31st, we're going to start a diet. Well, you're just dumb. Because you know what's coming. November, which is the food month. If it is November, you're eating. I'm sorry. I, I, I talked about it last week. I don't know how many did this. You skip breakfast so you can eat as much as you possibly can. Right? You want to make your stomach ready. 
And you want to have an altar close by because you know you're going to be repenting because you eat too much. November and December is not the right time. But does one minute really make that much difference? Does it matter? One moment, one 60-second interval of time placed in just the right location can make all the difference in the world. It's easy to get wrapped up in the activity of the season that we miss the miracle of Christmas. We miss it. This Christmas season, I want to spend time, and I want us all to spend time, I want to challenge you to spend time reflecting on the significance of why and what we celebrate and look at the miraculous that is called Christmas. Because Christmas is a miraculous time. It is full of miracles. And when you look at these miracles, you see where God came in in just the right time to make all this take place. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, we're going to talk about four miracles. All right, today we're going to talk about the miracle of the moment. Then we got the miracle of the message, the miracle of the method, and the miracle of the manger. We will close out on Christmas Eve. Each week, a candle will be burning to represent one of the four topics of Advent, which is hope, peace, joy, and love. The fifth candle is lit on Christmas morning to signify the birth of Christ has come. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, is a great verse to start out with. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, you can look on the screen. But this is what it says, okay? But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. When the set time had fully come, at just the right time, God sent his son. This is called A miracle of the moment. In the Christmas story, there are actually three significant moments that we see, all right? In the whole Christmas story in its entirely, there are moments that are that are worthy to be recorded. There are moments that are worthy to be remembered when we think about Jesus and what he did and what God did by sending his son. The first one is this: he came at the right moment. He came here at the right moment. How many of you have ever seen Miracle on 34th Street? All right, so how many of you have seen the 1940s version of Miracle on 34th Street? All right, so both of them, good. So you got a roundabout picture of of it all. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies, and me and my family will watch it, and uh, it's it's just fun, right? It's a great movie about an old man named Chris Kringle who believes that he is Santa Claus and wants others to believe in him as well, all right? There are important parallels from this movie to the Christmas story that I want to show you. I wanted to show it on the screen, but because of YouTube and their uh, incredibleness, um, I couldn't do it or they would cut us off. But I will tell you about it and I will try to be a good storyteller, okay? There are parallels to it. There's a scene in the beginning of the movie where Chris is trying to instruct a department store Santa just before the big Thanksgiving Day parade on how to be Santa. If you remember, he goes out there. The guys had a little bit too much, uh, uh, you know, grandpa's old cough medicine and... um, He goes out there and he's trying to teach him how to be Santa. So he's taking the whip and he's... You know, trying to show him how it's done, how you're supposed to be this. After a little argument and tussle between the two, Chris is asked to be the new Santa, right? Because the old guy is fired because he was drunk. Let's just face it. That's so he's fired. Get out of here. You're a slob. Get up, get away. And so Chris Kringle steps in and he becomes the new Santa. Now, from what I just explained, it's hard to see a miracle in this. So what's the point? Was it by chance that Chris Kringle was at the parade that day? No, that was the miracle of the moment. You see, now I know that's an outlandish kind of uh, explanation or example, but I want to show you that there's moments where when you're in the right place and the timing is right, things happen. At just the right time, Chris Kringle showed up at the parade and saved not only the parade, but also the jobs of countless people. The Bible says, when the time came to completion, God sent his son. When the time came, when God deemed it was necessary for the moment that the miracle was to take place, and that was Jesus coming, God set all this up. But the reality is, most people miss the miracle in the moment. 
Most people did not recognize the significance of Jesus' birth at that time. They didn't see the significance in it. People were too busy to pay attention to the young girl giving birth to her first child out in a stable in Bethlehem. They were too busy to figure that out. At just the right time in history, Jesus was born with just the right people at just the right moment. The coming of Christ into the world was not a matter of chance or coincidence. It was part of God's divine plan to establish before the foundation of the very world. God knew he was going to send Jesus before he even created man. He knew it. He knows everything, right? How many agree? God knows it all. God has known it all since the beginning of time, and God will always know more than we do. He knew this. He knew what was coming. So if you look at the history and the context of this story, what you see is that at the time, the Roman world was in great expectation, waiting for a deliverer at the time of Jesus' birth. Old religions were dying, and old philosophies were empty and powerless to change people's lives. All that was kind of going by the wayside. Strange mystery religions were invading the land. Does any of this sound familiar? At this moment in time in the history of our world, we need a Savior to step in again. We need this Savior to be part of our life. And the world today is so busy that we're failing to see the the miracle of the moment that Christmas was. We're missing it. Religion was in spiritual bankruptcy, and people were hungry for something real and life-changing. God was preparing the world for the arrival of his son. See, God saw what the Romans were going through. He saw what the government was doing. He saw everything that was going on. He knew it all. He knew what was going to happen. He knew the miracle that he was going to send to fix it, to change people's lives once again. From a historical perspective, the Roman Empire had helped Prepare the world for the birth of Jesus. Isn't that funny? The Romans crucified him. But they actually prepared the world for the, for the birth, for his coming. Didn't even realize it. The Romans had constructed roads that connected city to city that made travel easier. Think about, okay, listen. Think about all this. Everything leads up to a moment. Everything leads up to a moment. I think about the things in my life I've gone through. I think about uh, things that you possibly have gone through in your life that's led you up to the moment that you're in right now. If I hadn't, if I hadn't missed, I say it loosely, but if I hadn't missed God 20 years ago by going to a position that I knew I probably should have at the time, but I just wasn't thinking. This all led up to right now because if I hadn't have done that, if I had have taken this certain position, I might not be in South Dakota right now. You understand what I'm saying? God works things out. He looks at it. He knows the end results before we do, but he's, everything's leading up to the moment that he wants to do the miracle in your life. And everything was leading up to the moment that Jesus was going to be born on this day. All roads ultimately led to Rome. The world was at peace under Roman rule. Roman laws protected the citizens and Roman soldiers guarded the peace. Thanks to both the Greek and the Roman conquest, Latin and Greek were known across the empire, making communication possible with many all over the world. The Old Testament prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah were completed. At just the right time, God sent his son. Just this moment. This was the moment that was prime and ready to receive what God was going to send. So the first thing that we see is the miracle of the right moment. The second thing, the second significant miracle was that he provided at the right moment. He came at the right moment and he provided at the right moment. Contentment is often found in motions. That's why, I'm not saying everybody, but some people in this room, for the first 60 seconds when I walked up on this stage, were uneasy. Just start hearing nervous laughter. (laughs) Because you're uneasy, right? But he provides the right moment. Contentment is found when we're moving. 
If I'm walking around, I'm fine. But if I've got to stand in one spot, like I did when I went to Dallas a few months ago, and I sat there in the airport for three and a half hours waiting for a rental car, I was uneasy. I found myself laughing to keep from doing other things, right? In one spot, just like this, for three and a half hours. There was no restaurants. There was no drink machines. There was nothing. Stood there, just like this, three and a half hours. I was uneasy. My contentment had left. It makes us content to go through motions without ever experiencing the miracles that are evident. Some this holiday season need nothing short of a miracle. You need that. You're waiting right now for God to provide nothing short of a miracle. The good news is that God comes to us at just the right time with just what we need for the moment. Psalm 145, 15 says, all eyes look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. Psalm 104, 27 says, all of them wait for you to give them their food at the right time. Deuteronomy eleven fourteen, I will provide rain for your land in the proper time. The autumn and spring rains and you will harvest your grain, your new wine and oil. To everyone in this room and listening to the sound of my voice, God knows exactly what you are going through at just this moment. He knows He knows what you need at just the right time. He will come to you and provide what you need for the moment. His timing is always perfect. It's perfect. He has perfect timing. You think about everything that was going on in the Roman world and the Roman Empire around the time Jesus was born. That wasn't always happening, and it didn't continue to happen later on. But in just that right moment, God needed what was going on, what Rome was doing. He needed that in order to send the Messiah to be received by the people. He needed that. God not only came at the right time, but he continues to do so. Romans 5, 6 says, For while we were still helpless, at the appointed moment, Christ died for the ungodly. Some versions say, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In that hopeless state, he showed up just in time. So when do you need a miracle? When you have no more options and no more resources, you are in a position to receive a miracle from God. He has promised to come at just the right time and provide just what we need in that moment. When we're utterly hopeless, Christ still shows up today. The Christmas season should remind us of that. It should be a reminder. We got so much hustle and bustle going on. I know everybody's shopping. Everybody's doing this thing. Everybody's baking cookies for pie. You know, whatever. <laughs> We're all doing stuff. But the thing is, we need to take a moment and stop and remember that there is a miracle in the moment waiting for us. There is something God wants to show us in every season of our life and in every season that there is. This is the Christmas season. This is the season where people are more uh, are usually nicer. Usually it's after Black Friday that people are nicer. You know, people are more joyful. That's why, that's why a lot of nonprofits do fundraisers after Thanksgiving or just around Thanksgiving because people feel more joyous and they feel more generous. Right? So if you're feeling generous today, we'll receive an offering later. But he came just the right moment. He provides at just the right moment. And now he's saying, number three, now is the right moment. Now is the right moment. We wait and wait and wait and wait for stuff. We never think, I'm going to get off on a little soapbox for a minute. Because I'm guilty of this so many times. I wait for God without the expectation. Does that make sense? I wait for God. I say, God, you, you say in your word this. And, and listen, I'm going to encourage you. Pray the word over your situation. Speak the word of God. Your words, your words mean nothing. Your words are powerless without this word. This is the word you need. So I'm going to speak this word over my situation, over my circumstance. But here's the thing. We speak it without believing it a lot of times. Do you understand? And I'm just being honest with you because this is what we do. 
We do this. We say, well, I need a miracle. I'm, I'm waiting for, I, I need my miracle. I need my miracle. I'm waiting for my miracle without the expectation that it's actually going to come. And we all do it because we're human. That's, that's what we do because we're, we're waiting for this, this uh, either Damascus Road experience or we're waiting for this burning bush, whatever it may be, when God may want to do a miracle in your life in a way that you're least expecting it. But if we're not putting fully our trust in what he wants to do, what we're doing is we're trying to make our own miracle and it's never going to happen. So we have to not only wait with expectation, but we have to believe that that's going to take place, that God's going to show up for us. He, listen, he's for us. He's not against us. And if he's for us, who can be against us, right? So now is the right moment. It seems that we are always waiting for just the right time to do something. We are waiting for the right time to make that commitment of our life to Christ as Savior and Lord. I look at these people being baptized today. Listen, they, they didn't wait, or maybe they did wait, but they finally got to that moment. This you experienced in front of you. You experienced the celebration of a miracle right in front of you. We celebrated a miracle in people's life. That is the greatest miracle you'll ever see is salvation. The greatest miracle you could ever see is salvation because when you go from death to life, it takes a miracle for that to take place. When you go from being condemned to eternal hell to living in eternity with Jesus in an instant, that's a miracle. We have to recognize that, and we have to look at that, and we have to look at what happened here today and go, wow, I just experienced the celebration of five miracles that took place. It's the miracle of the moment. It's a miracle. Maybe you're waiting for the right time to make the commitment. Now is the right time. Now is the right time to meet Jesus. Maybe you're waiting for that right time to make that commitment to get involved in the life of the church. I've been sitting on my tail for, an, for a year and a half. I've been sitting on my tail for two years waiting for the right time so that I can get involved. Listen, God says go. He says go now. Get involved. Serve in the church. Sign up to be a part of a ministry. Do something. Do something. Don't just be seat warmers every week. Do something. Step in, step up. Now is the right time. Maybe you're waiting for just the right time to commit to a closer walk with Jesus. Maybe you've been waiting for just the right time to give up that bad habit. Now's the right time. 2 Corinthians 6 2 said, I heard you in an acceptable time and I helped you in the day of salvation. Look, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. God even says it. Now is the right time to make the commitment to Christ. Jesus said in Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now. Now is the right time to make the commitment to Christ and receive God's gift of salvation. What better time than the miracle season to say yes to Jesus? Now is the time to get involved. Now is the time to recommit your marriage and your family to him. Now is the time to renew your commitment to walk in a closer fellowship with Jesus. Now is the right time to draw close to God. He says, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. He's just looking at you going, when's the right time? Now. Because if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you right now. Not next week. Not two years from now. Now. One moment in time can determine an eternal destiny. Right now is the moment. So you don't have to live your life separated from the love of God. Today is the right time to receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. If you have never made that commitment, I'm going to invite you to do it today. Receive him as your Savior and your Lord. Then I want to invite you to make that commitment. See, this moment that we're in right now can change your life for eternity. It can change your life for eternity. It can change your eternal destiny. Choose Jesus and you're choosing an abundant life on earth and an eternal life with Christ in heaven forever. You wonder what you need at this exact moment? You need Jesus at this exact moment. There's, there's nothing greater than having Christ. Nothing greater than having Jesus. 
I spent, listen, I spent my life, I spent a lot of my life as a teenager running from the call of God, running from salvation, running from all that stuff, doing a lot of worldly things that I shouldn't have been doing. But it was that one moment in time where God knew that now was the time for me. And fortunate enough, I let him break me. I let him, I let him just break off all those things that I was doing and rebuild me right there in that moment. That represents the miracle of Christmas. That's the hope part of it. You'll recognize the moment for what it truly is. It's a miracle. Don't put off making that commitment you need to make today because now is the right time. What better way than to lead your family as a new creation in Christ? during this season. I'm going to ask this question today. If you're here this morning, for those of you that are new, this maybe it's your first time, maybe you've come to see somebody be baptized. Thanks for coming. I know it means the world to them, and we're, ha- we're, we're happy to have you too. But here's the thing. We're, we, don't, we don't sugarcoat stuff around here, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm not going to ask you to do all that stuff. Because here's, here's, my, here's my thought on it. This is just Keithism, so just bear with it. If you can't be honest in this room, it's going to be hard in the world. It's going to be really hard to live for Jesus in the world. If you need, bow your heads, close your eyes, nobody looking, please climb under your seat so that nobody sees you. That's going to be really hard out there. In here, it's safe. This is a safe place in here. This is a place where we'll rejoice with you. When somebody gives their heart to Jesus, we rejoice with them. We rejoice when people proclaim it publicly through baptism. We rejoice with them. So if you're here this morning and you say, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, today I need to make that commitment. Maybe maybe you used to. Maybe you used to have a relationship a long time ago and you've you've walked away from it. You You have turned your back on God and walked away. Listen, it happens. But now it's the right moment to come back. Now is the right moment to fix that. So if that's you... If you're here this morning and you say, I need to make that commitment today, will you pray for me? I'm going to ask you to lift your hand. I'm going to ask you to be bold and lift your hand. Everybody's looking around. Everybody's eyes are open. doesn't matter. Because this separates it. This separates things. So if that's you, I just want to pray for you. we got something we want to put in your hand. That's it. So I'm going to give you about five seconds. It's going to be another five seconds of silence. But if that's you today and you say, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need a miracle to take place in my life. And that's the first miracle that needs to take place. And that's the one that's going to be the most important. If that's you, will you lift your hand just so I can see it? Start the clock. Five seconds. You bite off. Okay. You bite off. Thank you. get this idea that when we give our lives to Jesus there's this formulated prayer that we have to say um, 1 John 1 9 is really what we need to look at 1 John 1 9 says if you confess your sins you are, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness if you confess your sins talk to him talk to God my, my, biggest, my biggest encouragement to you because here's the thing by lifting your hand you just said in your heart I want to belong to Jesus God sees the heart he sees those that, that, that desire inside of you so at that moment the Bible says if anyone's in Christ he's a new creation the old is gone the new has come in that moment that he saw your hearts cried it says Jesus I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior salvation comes into your life just like that But this is what I encourage you. I encourage you to take time. Set aside a time of prayer every day. Whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes. It it doesn't matter right now. Right now what matters is you're talking to God. Jesus, I need you. This is the simplest prayer. This is one of the most powerful prayers I've ever heard. I was standing on Jackson Square in Mardi Gras. 20-something years ago doing some street evangelism. 
Okay, I'm just walking around telling people about Jesus. And this guy gives his heart to Jesus. And I, it's funny because I stepped back and because he said about every cuss word in the book when he was talking to God, right? And I was like, whoa, what is this guy doing? Lightning coming down, you know? But it was the most sincere prayer I ever heard in my life. He was on his knees. He was weeping. And he was just confessing to God everything that he had done. He confessed to God how, like, in his words, what a sorry human being he was. So what we did was we encouraged him and said, listen, that may be what your life is right now, but God is looking right now at you and smiling because of what your heart's crying out for right now. Your heart's crying out for, for newness, to be a changed person. So one of the most powerful prayers I've ever heard was that man's prayer because he was honest. It wasn't formulated. It wasn't say this, say this, say this, say this. It was honest. And he just said, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you is one of the most powerful prayers that any of us could ever pray. Jesus, I need you. I can't do this alone. Jesus, I need you. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of those things that I've done. I confess them to you right now, and I repent. Repentance is different than forgiveness. Forgiveness means forgiveness. Repentance means turning away from those things. It's doing a 180 from where you are right now. So you're going to do everything you can to repent from those sins that are in your life. That's repentance. So we start this road to repentance. So I want to encourage you. Raising your hand, that's courage. Second step, baptism. I mean, it, it's, it, there's steps to it. And in that, in, in that packet that we gave you, you'll see that. And we want to help you with that. We want to walk you through that. So I'm proud of you for making that decision today, for saying yes to Jesus. Can we pray? for those this morning. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that you see our heart. I'm so thankful that you, you see us. You see the parts of us that nobody else gets to see. The parts that sometimes we hold deep inside of us. Lord, I pray for those that had the courage this morning to lift their hands to say yes to Jesus. I pray God that they will as they start this new journey in a relationship with you, Lord, I just pray, God, that you will move in their life like they never expected. Father, that you'll wrap your loving arms around them. Lord, as your word says, your love is relentless towards us, God, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So, Lord, today, I pray they feel that. I pray they experience that. And this miracle that they just stepped into, this miracle of knowing Christ, of going from death to life, Lord, I just ask you to strengthen them. Lord, to put people in their life that can encourage them and speak life to them. Help us as a church get behind them. Help them grow. Lord, today we, we just give this time to you. We give this season to you. And may we all just stop for a moment and think about the miracle of the moment that changed the course of history. In Jesus' name, everybody said. If you would like to learn more about our church or give to our ministry, please visit our website at Bethel.ag.